The 2022 Formula 1 season so far has been a dismal one by the lofty standards of Mercedes. While it is third in the Constructors' Championship heading into the British Grand Prix, Mercedes hasn't come close to a win with its current run of nine races without a victory, its worst since the closing stages of the 2013 season. But there is one small positive for Mercedes, thanks to a section of Formula 1's regulations called the Aerodynamic Testing Restrictions, better known as ATR. As a result of these rules, Mercedes will get an increase in both wind tunnel running and CFD items for the second half of the year, giving it more aerodynamic testing than Red Bull and Ferrari. So how does this system work? Who else has gained or lost? And what difference will it really make? The ATR system was introduced in 2021. This wasn't the first time F1 had restricted wind tunnel running as the first measures were initially introduced in 2008. Those rules evolved over time with CFD limits soon coming in, but they were always about a flat restriction that applied to all teams. But the current ATR regulations are very different, working as a handicap system that gives teams ranked lower in the Constructors' Championship a bigger wind tunnel and CFD allowance than those ranked above. The idea is simple and laid out in Appendix 7 of F1 Sporting Regulations. The full appendix is over 4,500 words, but we'll distill it down to its fundamentals. Each team is allocated a coefficient figure, named, obviously, C, based on its position in the Constructors' Championship. For the first year of the ATR last year, these figures were in 2.5% steps, but for 2022 they doubled to represent 5% steps. Percentage of what, I hear you ask? Well, the ATR regulation set a 100% figure both for wind tunnel runs and CFD items. Those are laid out in two tables that set the allowance for each of the six ATR test periods during the year. These tables show the number of restricted wind tunnel runs, called RWTT, and the number of restricted aerodynamic test geometries, dubbed RATGs, allowed in CFD. The CFD table also allocates the computing power permitted, which is the MAUH number, or Mega Allocation Unit Hours. The R for restricted is included because there are certain wind tunnel and CFD activities that are not restricted, but these are special cases that we don't need to be too concerned about here. Take a look at Appendix 7 of the Sporting Regulations to find out more on those. The only team that gets the exact allocations in the tables is the team finishing 7th. The rest have to multiply the figure by C, the percentage coefficient, with the best place team getting only 70% of the allowance and the 10th place team 115%. That's laid out in this table. There are three ATR periods in the first six months of the year and three in the second, each lasting around eight weeks. And yes, six times eight adds up to 48 weeks of a 52-week year. But with a mandatory August shutdown covering two of those weeks, the other two are dealt with by rounding up periods. These allocations are based on Constructors' Championship position, but are reset every six months. For the first half of this year, it was based on the 2021 standings, but it resets based on positions on June 30th, so that's before the next race of the season at Silverstone. Therefore, Mercedes slips from first to third in the ranking, meaning it moves from 70% of the allocation to 80%. With last year's point standings dictating the wind tunnel and CFD test allocations, Mercedes had the least, and Haas, which finished rock bottom in last year's Constructors' Championship, most. As Mercedes has dropped two places in the standings, it is, along with Williams, the biggest gainer in terms of aerodynamic testing. While Mercedes gains, title rivals Red Bull and Ferrari get a reduced allocation. They are both one place higher in the championship than they were at the end of last year, and drop by one 5% step. At the other end of the table, Williams has dropped from 8th in last year's standings to its current 10th, meaning it goes from 105% of the allocation to 115%. Alfa Tauri and Aston Martin also gain by one 5% increment, thanks to being one place lower in the standings now than they were at the end of the year. Aston Martin was set to gain double that prior to Canada, but Lance Stroll's point for 10th moved it ahead of Haas into 8th in the standings. The team suffering the biggest loss in terms of aero testing is Alfa Romeo. 
It was ninth in last year's Constructors' Championship but is currently sixth, meaning it will be on 95% of the aero testing allowance for the second half of the year, compared to 110% for the first half. Haas is also one place higher in the standings, meaning it drops by one 5% step, having been shuffled down to ninth in the Constructors' Championship in Canada. The reasoning for the mid-season change in allocations is simple. It ensures a team that struggled one year and thrived the next, or vice versa, has an aero testing allocation commensurate with its current competitiveness. The current ATR system, with 5% steps between teams, is in place until the end of 2025 and is likely to continue beyond that. It is the first time in F1 history there has been such a handicap system, and the hope is that it will have a gentle but noticeable effect on levelling the playing field. It is designed to work with other measures such as the cost cap and the more equitable distribution of the F1 revenue shared by the teams to ensure F1 becomes increasingly competitive over the coming years. But it's certainly good news for Mercedes given its ongoing struggles. On race weekend, all eyes are on the driver. But behind every podium place, there's a team of off-track heroes working hard to power on-track success. As an official partner of the McLaren Formula 1 team, Smartsheet is showcasing how McLaren's off-track heroes drive success for their team. But Smartsheet's commitment to supporting off-track heroes doesn't end when the race season does. As champions and facilitators of powerful processes, the Smartsheet platform helps off-track heroes across the world put their teams in pole position every day of the year. Want to join the celebration and start powering your process? Visit Smartsheet.com today to get involved. So what benefit will Mercedes get from the extra wind tunnel and CFD testing? It's difficult to quantify what effect this has on teams' development, but it stands to reason that those with more wind tunnel time and CFD items have greater potential to make gains. Speaking in 2021, Ferrari team principal Mattia Bonotto suggested its extra testing under the ATR rules in the first half of the year compared to Mercedes, a difference of five places in the 2020 standings with a 2.5% step for each one, was worth less than a tenth of a second. However, that was applied to the 2021 cars and with the rapid rate of development of the current machines, it's likely to amount to more than that. But the equation is more complex than this. With teams in the second half of the year trading off ongoing 2022 car development with 23 work, the readjustment of the allocations makes enough of a difference to have an impact on the relative performance of the cars, particularly next season. A bigger allowance doesn't guarantee more progress, just as a reduced one doesn't mean less. It's all about how efficiently the team uses what they've got. As Mercedes Chief Technical Officer James Allison explained when the ATR regulations were originally drawn up, the rules don't stymie innovation, but they put extra pressure on teams to run what he calls super smart. The changes aren't going to transform the season for Mercedes, but it gives a little more room to manoeuvre. And it's important to remember that tests going on in the wind tunnel today don't translate into new parts on the car tomorrow, there's a bigger lag in the system than that. But for a team that is still searching for answers and that looks set to have to make some fundamental changes to both its mechanical and aerodynamic philosophy next year, the extra testing should be beneficial. And for those going in the other direction, for example championship leading Red Bull, it means some even tougher decisions when it comes to managing its aerodynamic testing resources over the second half of the year.